Welcome back to New Rockstars, and just because the Scarlet Witch destroyed all the copies of the Dark Hole in Multiverse of Madness, you probably thought it was safe to read a book at your local library, didn't you? <laughs> Think again, alphabet nerds, because the Dark Hole in Multiverse of Madness is still out there in the MCU. And I don't have to worry about it, because, you know, despite 30 years of trying, I still can't read. This is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love. My name is MT, and going wrong with me today is the Queen of Dreams herself. It's Jessica Clemens. What's going on, Jess? That's a nice way of saying Freddy Krueger's wife, but yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Freddy Krueger's Hell yeah. Wife. I went to, to y'all's wedding. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was a beautiful uh, wedding. It was gorgeous. Yeah. All that, I'll never all that loose skin um, and burnt All that body loose parts. skin. Uh, it was great. Beautiful. It was held I'll to clean up afterwards. I'll never forget about it in therapy. <laughs> it was, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's the Scarlet Witch of the Owl House herself. It's the one and only... Whitney Van Lanningham, what's going ah, on, Whitney? That's the best thing. That's my best intro. That's the best thing you've ever said about me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, it's me. You. I'm here. I haven't been on this show in so long. I'm so excited to see Seriously, you guys. Seriously, we love having you. Welcome I missed back to the you. show, Whitney. I missed you, too. And, of course, we cannot forget about our special guest, the Chaos King in the flesh. It's my boy, Eddie Villanueva. What's going on, Eddie? What is up, my fellow nerds? How you guys doing? I'm excited to be here as well. It's been a minute, with, just like Whitney said, so yeah. I'm excited just to dive right in. Hey, and Eddie is from the Film Philosophers podcast, by the way. You guys should check that out. Like, it's really oh, great. Oh, hell yeah, you should. Um, all right, guys. Multiverse of Madness, also known as What Mouth the Movie, is now out in glorious HD on Disney+, Plus, so we can all watch Reed Richards turn into toilet paper together. But rewatching Multiverse of Madness made me realize something crazy about the Darkhold, y'all, which leads us to our first topic of today, the Darkhold is still very much a threat to the MCU multiverse. And here's why I think so. Because if you remember at the end of Multiverse of Madness, yes, Wanda destroys all the copies of the Darkhold throughout the multiverse. However, we do only see her destroy the one Mount Wondergore in Earth 616, which means that Mount Wondergore still exists in other universes in the multiverse. And as we know from Multiverse of Madness, Mount Wondergore in the, the actual, the temple there at, at the top of Mount Wondergore is where the Darkhold was copied. Like that's where the Darkhold was written off the walls of Mount Wondergore. So if Mount Wondergore still exists in the multiverse, that means someone can make a new Darkhold to uh, ruin people's lives with. So what do you guys think? Uh, I feel like there's always a possibility. I mean, we look at the Marvel universe as a whole and we have, I mean, obviously this running joke, nobody ever stays dead except for Uncle Ben. Um, it seems like <laughs> the idea of something strong and something as powerful of an entity as the Darkhold actually going away is non-existent in our minds. I mean, uh, mm. really, you have somebody who has the power of the Eye of Agamotto who can literally turn his hand like this, like he's turning the dial on the uh, thermostat, and pretty much return an apple to its original form or make it wither. So if he can do that with that kind of object, which is an organic object, why couldn't he do it with a book? And maybe not him mm. per se, but if somebody else had hold of the Eye of Agamotto or a power similar to, they could essentially be nefarious and you know turn back the dial on uh you know the dark hold and create a whole new dark hold altogether it's just so true like there yeah. is a way for like the 616 universe even to get their dark hold back but you know the, but the time stone is gone so like the yeah. time stone's not really a factor anymore so like i guess that like is a great thing for for the dark hold coming back but like still it it could still happen like in in like the dark i feel like the time stone could come back in, in any form. Well, um, we just know yeah, that the time zone has gone in Loki, one universe. There's apparently just like a whole drawer full of them just laying around yeah. somewhere. So yeah. I so, like, think the that the Infinity Stones totally have the potential to come back. Some, but I some don't point. think Scarlet Witch, I think Scarlet Witch got rid of it in every universe versus the stones mm. that she couldn't get rid of and all, or that mm -hmm. she didn't care about. Um, I think the only way that it could come back is if the demon comes back um, and the demon rewrites yeah. mm. his things on a wall. Um, Ooh, I think it's gonna be, yeah, I think it's going to be really hard for... Ooh. I always said Shathan, so... It's like I did too, like, and then I did like, a video, Shathan. and I said it, and everybody made fun of me, and I was like, sorry, it's a... <laughs> it's, a it's a fake demon person. A I'm sorry word. I pronounced... It, I'm sorry for offending you, Shathan, Kathan, I don't... Whatever. You, Kathan <laughs> can't say Van Lanningham right, so, you know, just eat right? my nuts, man. There you go. <laughs> I, I agree Wait, with sorry, Jess. I, 
I feel like I feel like Jess is on to something in terms of because from what we do see in the film, the implication is that every book has been destroyed, but we don't mm. know if every time stone was used mm. as part of that end game, you know, strategy for right. you know the events with Thanos. So there could be a ton of time stones still existing in other universes, kind of like what Whitney right. said in Loki. There's a whole drawer full of them. I mean, you know, you could do one of those little, you know, bedazzling on a vest, you know, another Thor vest and kind of thing with the stones. But there's always an opportunity. <laughs> so there's always an option. Imagine if your drunk, your uh, your junk drawer was just filled with infinity stones instead of like random pencils from the fourth grade that are worn down to the nub and paper clips and maybe a stray <laughs> uh, cassette tape. You're like, that's what my junk drawer is. I wish my junk drawer was infinity right. stones. Right, it's That'd filled be great. with just cosmic weaponry. No big mm. deal. Like. No, that can end the universe. Yeah, mine is <laughs> like, like stickers and eraser. sewing supplies. Like, <laughs> way lamer. Way lamer. That's, uh, I feel like that's how Thanos was just storing the Infinity Stones before you destroyed them. He's like, all right, all done. Got to put it in my drawer with the rest of my loose stuff. With my uh, farming With the rest materials. of my loose items. <laughs> he, was, he was just sitting in his room. He goes, you know what, guys? We could put these on a glove. <laughs> <laughs> that would totally rock. Yeah, that's that was just super stoned, like and he was like, "I think I could put these on a glove." Yeah, like I think I could go to the Met Gala with this. I think this would be. I think I could. <laughs> like he took too many edibles and couldn't stop looking at his own hands, and he was like, "Oh, I think I've discovered something." He's like, "Guys, the cock ringing idea is out. We're going with the glove. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> oh been a goodness. totally different end game in Infinity War, tell you that much. Hey man, that gives that's you like, that's a the different meaning to the word Infinity endgame, War. if you know what I mean. <laughs> but no, um, so yeah, back to the topic about this dark hold still existing in the MCU. So like, what do you guys think, if this is true, could be like the possible implications? Like, who else do you think could be tempted by the dark hold if it still exists? Well, first of all, I had a theory a while back that I did a video on. Mm -hmm. I think that Wanda is still alive. I don't think that she died in the collapse of right. Mount Undugor. I think that she somehow survived. I think that her magic protected her, whether she wanted it to or not. And I think that that was like what that like scarlet plume that we saw in the explosion was. I think that that was actually right. her magic protecting her, not mm. her like dying and exploding in a little red cloud. I mean, she could have, but I, this is rogue theory, bitch. I'm yeah, my go rogue for theory. It. I think that she's no. still. I think she's still alive, and I think mm. that at some point, what I would love to see, and it might not happen, but whatever, I think it would be so cool to see, like, another Wanda from another universe getting the Darkhold back through her Ooh. Mount Wondegor, and then our Wanda is, like, displaced, doesn't, like, has no memory of who mm. she is, doesn't even know what happened, you know, head empty, no thoughts, just just her beautiful, just like beautiful me. face. Yeah, me too. Empty. I was saying, you know, just like just like <laughs> head empty, no thoughts. Um, so I think that it'd be really cool to have to see Wanda like get her memories back, get her mojo back, and then fight another Wanda from making the same mistakes. Mm. I'd, I'd see that short film, like all the other ones. Yeah, how Wanda that. got her groove back. I, I totally yeah, see Wanda that. got her groove back. <laughs> yeah. I totally see that. I would love that. That would be dope. Yeah. But also, no, I feel like that scenario could potentially happen because we know that 838 Wanda had her life ruined by 616 yep. Wanda. And sure she everyone did. in the universe, or at least everyone on Earth, hates Wanda right now from that universe. So, and, and her Mount Wanda Gore still exists. Technically, so I feel like we could see a scenario where this wand is like, I have nowhere else to go. Everyone hates me. I'm going to go up, climb out this mountain and learn something new. And uh, <laughs> we can have another multiverse of madness. I'm going to take a situation. little hike and learn some new things. Oh, no, it's demonology. <laughs> oh, no, I'm possessed. <laughs> ah, shit, not again. Oh, darn. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I guess it's time for the ultimate judgment on my theory. Now, I need you guys to vote whether or not you think this this idea, this this wild theory, this rogue theory of the Darkhold being rewritten again from the very walls of Mount Wondergores in different realities. What do you guys think of it in general? But starting with Jessica Clemens. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't think it's rogus, but I also don't think it's bogus. 
It's just in Ooh. the middle. MT, I want you to Another start serving me of... piping hot <laughs> rogue theories. Piping I hot theories? I okay. it. It's like the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's not just. It's not right. <laughs> Except for it's not so, right. You go, if it's this not rogue, too hot, is this it's not bogus, cold. is it just ogus? It's oh, just, what did we came up with something in the middle for it last time, but I can't remember. It was this. You did this. Well, this, but we called it. Yeah, because I was like, oh, it's yeah. Ogus. It yeah, it's Ogus. 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 It's Ogus. <laughs> I think wow. it's crazy. Okay. I think it's a I'll good theory. The I just don't think it's crazy, but I do think it's a good theory. Okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. Ogus it is. One Ogus from one Jessica Clemens. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Next up, we have. Eddie, what do you think, Eddie? Um, I, I have to agree with Jessica. I, I feel like it's a good theory. I feel like there's obvious merit to it. Like we said, the whole Uncle Ben scenario, the the way Mwanda's obviously not fully gone. Uh, because, I mean, let's be honest. Can we really get rid of Elizabeth Olsen right now? Um, yeah, and too much power. It, and to and be quite Harley, frank. She's our Harley Quinn, which is unfortunate. She is. I need her to die initially. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel like it's 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 got a lot of merit to it, so I'll give it an Ogus as well. I, I feel like it's not okay. roguish enough to be out there and outlandish, but it is decent enough to have merit for it to be pretty much probably already in Feige's plan. Eddie Eddie Ooh, said it needs to be outlandish right. if he's going to approve of it. It needs mm. to be outlandish. <laughs> it's got to be. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I mean, I, I need okay. I need some like idle hand kind of you know homage yes. where it's actually sorry. you know Captain America's ass that had been chopped off and he's <laughs> right in the dark hold himself you know because of the fact of through powers because Wanda loved Captain America somehow blah blah blah. And Eddie, I think we all have dark hold on we, his ass. We have different levels of what rogue theory means to us, <laughs> and no. yours, <laughs> yours is uh, just pornography. <laughs> uh, partially, Tight. yeah, Tight. yeah. Tight. Yeah, I would love to see um, yeah. ass of M, um, just uh, the Steve re- the yes. reality where Steve ass, ass of M. Um, <laughs> makes his yeah. own reality. That would uh, be horrible because she would just happen. she would just carve the symbols in his ass cheeks. Have you seen that episode of Family Guy where they're in prison <laughs> and the mm-hmm. guy's sh- he's like, "Can you autograph my butt?" And he's like, "Sure," and he uses a shank to do it. That's what it would be. It would be horrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! And it's I not like Marvel that. isn't going in that yeah. direction. I mean, you guys remember the last Thor trailer where. <laughs> You flick too hard, damn it! You know that whole. Yeah. I mean, we're about to get you know the the front and the back possibly. So I mean, I just I'm just saying. Hey, it's just not like Marvel's not going that way anyway. Just I'm just say, I'm just, just rolling saying. with the tide. Hey man, they already once they put those two Game of Thrones actors in Eternals, mm-hmm. all bets were off. Uh, oh, we all bets were off, my friends. Yeah, we need more dick in the MCU. We just, we're, we're getting full nudity. Uh, we need yeah. some be crazy. more full frontal. I don't think they're good just at it more. because that sex scene in Eternals was atrocious. It was the worst thing I've ever <laughs> it seen. It was. Life. It wasn't it was good. Mid. <laughs> it, it, it was a pretty like mid sex scene. It was just. It made me uncomfortable. I was like, I don't want to watch it was, this. It was yeah, like, was like a, It was like a straight for TV. These? It was like a straight to TV movie kind of sex scene. One of those ones where it's just like uh, top of the head, bottom of the feet. They're making noises yeah. and then boom, it's done. Yeah, exactly. It would be hilarious if like they all they all had bodies of like Barbie dolls. So like because like they're androids, so it's like they're they're pretending <laughs> yeah. to have sex, you but like they don't have sex. And they just have to do like the Barbie. So like scissoring. Team America, World Police. You're talking about that sex scene. Basically, <laughs> yes. These two puppets just yes. Just, slapping together it's like hey this is how we can keep it pg-13 mm-hmm. um but anyway whitney what do you think i've got two oguses oh, i'll baby. take those oguses you know i think it's rogus as hell hey let's go i like it because i agree because i think that i think that we're gonna see wanda come back because i strongly believe that the house of m storyline is gonna come into play somehow I hope so too. and i think that if wanda comes back woundagore's coming back baby mm. wanda woundagore whitney let's go wanda woundagore whitney <laughs> www.com <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying um, <laughs> thank you i'll take that rogus with happiness so i, I would say two oguses oh, yeah. Equals one rogus? I think it's like sure. half of I, one rogus. I, I, think two, yeah. I don't yeah. think two negatives yeah. make a positive, but go off. Go off. <laughs> <laughs> go off. Feel free. Okay. Here's of the points. Okay, it is one rogus and two oguses. I, I will take that. But up next, Jess is going to pitch a wild mystery theory about the train in Miss Marvel. But first, we want to thank Upstart for sponsoring this episode of Rogue Theory, because it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt. And also, if you have terrible eyes like me. And sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help. 
And that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. So whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you are more than just your credit score. Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. And you can check your rate within minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So do not wait and check your rate today over at upstart.com slash rogue theory. That is upstart.com slash rogue theory to check your rate today. And do not forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you or else they will not know. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash rogue theory. You also want to express thanks for ExpressVPN. My God, they're so good. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like having an array of superpowers and only being able to use one of them. Why would you limit yourself like that? That's stupid. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Tap into that unlimited power people because Netflix has different libraries of content for every country, but without a VPN, you can only see a fraction of their content based on your location. That's whack. ExpressVPN lets you change your online location. You can control where you want Netflix or other streaming websites to think you're located. Several members of the new Rockstar staff loved using ExpressVPN. Our screen producer, Brandon, was able to catch up on Better Call Saul before it was available on US Netflix because Brandon is a smart man who knows how to get things done the efficient way. We love ExpressVPN for its blazing fast speeds that enable you to stream in HD without buffering. And the fact that it works with tons of streaming services like BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and more, it's even more amazing. So be smart, stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. That's ridiculous. Come on, love yourself. Get your money's worth over at expressvpn.com slash rogue. And don't forget to use my link at expressvpn.com slash rogue to get extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of true crime podcasts and it's been great, you know, aside from all the murder. But one reason it's been great to listen to is because I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, I have the widest ear holes in the world and uh, they just won't fall out of my ear holes. It's amazing. Uh, Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to, plus noise isolation and awareness mode. So you can choose to be immersed in sound or be able to hear your surroundings when you need to, which is very important. I like to use my Raycons to listen to podcasts while I'm doing dumb, boring chores around the house. They're great because they never fall out no matter how much I move around. And some of my chores involve me fighting lots of crime in my neighborhood. So like I need to be able to punch without the earbuds falling out. You understand. Uh, Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life. Then when you need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly because we're in the future. With Raycons, you get the same quality audio as other premium audio brands, but at half the price. Amazing. And they're built to last, so you don't have to worry about using them too much. It's no wonder Raycons Everyday Earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. Check out Raycons Wireless Earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review as well. Go to buyraycon.com slash rogue theory today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash rogue theory to score 15% off buyraycon.com slash rogue theory. All right, just take it away. Yeah, I got you. So my theory isn't as crazy, I don't think, but maybe it is. Let's see. Let's dive into it. Mm. Essentially, I think that the train station of Karachi is where the veil meets Earth and Aisha stayed back to fight off the other clandestines and died um, in the process. Mm. So if you watched episode, this is all about episode four of Miss Marvel. So if you haven't watched episode four by now, I'm going to spoil it all for you. And I don't care. Right. <laughs> you had, you had like six days by the time this video comes out to have seen it by now. So mm. I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> so this is, I'll give you a list of the reasons why I think this is possible. So number one, in episode one, we thought, or at least I thought what was the watchers when she jumps back down into that, uh, the, what we thought was like, um, the spiritual, any kind of realm, uh, we thought those might have been the yeah. Watchers, or at least I did. I pitched that very hard, and I now right. know that that is not, because those are definitely the people dip boarding different trains mm -hmm. during the partition. Um, and but I don't I blame think, you for thinking they were Watchers. They looked very We watchable. were all like, oh, because the, I don't know. I listened to Boss. The it's glowing Eric eyes. 
It was the eyes. <laughs> it was the eyes and Eric Voss. So uh, we can blame tweet Eric. At Eric Voss. Do not come to me. So I think that uh, the, it's clearly the people boarding different trains, going to different places during the partition. And I think that crack that we see her go through, we're like, oh, it's her just dipping into it. No, I think that crack symbolizes the veil that's between um, where the trains Ooh. were departing and the actual nor. And I also think she didn't just dip into like an idea. She actually went into the past again. That was just a little taste. We got in the first episode and we get it fully in the fourth episode at the very end. Number two, Kamala's father said Damn. that Sana's mom just disappeared that night. And Cameron's mom said that she got lost that night, like the rest of them during the partition. And that's another hint to why I think that's the veil. That little veil is cracked. And that's why people that are clandestines are able to get in and out of there as long as they have the bangle. They also said that the bangle yeah. is fully used by Kamala because she has the humanity of the earth. And I think that's why the clandestines mm. can't use the bangle, but they can use it if they go to the train station of Karachi because that's where there's a crack in the veil. So it's simpler for them to get back into Noor if they get that one single bangle and can just sneak through that crack. Second, thirdly, thirdly, mm. I'm sorry. Mm. What you seek is seeking you is what is said. You preaching, inscribed, girl, go for it. <laughs> is what is inscribed on the uh, is inscribed on the bangle, and I think that is. Clearly because it's the key to Nor. So it's like, while you seek Nor, Nor is seeking you because Nor wants you to come back because that is a piece of the <laughs> Nor technology and the light. Fourthly, I think Aisha recognized that Earth was actually a lot better than what it was. She has a daughter, she has a husband. And I think the other ones, Cameron's mom, the evil clandestines are like, no, this Earth sucks. Look at what they're doing to each other. They're literally murdering each other. We need to take it over <laughs> and just re redo everything. That's why we need to release the veil. And I think... She was, Aisha was on board at that at first. And then she realized that that was not the way to go. And kind of in a godlike moment, I think she realized, like, I need to protect these people from my own people. And that's mm, how the veil became. Right. And then that's how she didn't die, essentially. She got to go back. Because if they were all exiled, she got to go back to Nora because Nora was like, you recognize that these are people. There's humanity in them. That's why, like... Uh, Kamala Ooh. can use the full power because she has the humanity of Earth still with her and the other clandestines that are evil are still exiled and they don't and that's why they think the Red Dagger Society or whatever think that they're only there to destroy the Earth and it's like no they're not we only know from the ones that got exiled we don't know from the other clandestines that are still in Nor who are, that probably just think Earth's a great place and we shouldn't be destroying it. So I think that train station that she keeps seeing and her aunt and her great grandmother that she keeps seeing is actually the veil that's cracking and she can see that veil. And that's the closest that her grandma, great grandma can get to her. But I think that train station specifically is the border that is cracked, separating Nor from uh, Earth. Uh, boom, da bop, mm. boom, da bop. I <laughs> love this theory. I think I it's it so too. great because, like, yeah. we, like, there's something special about this train station. There's something about yes. the train itself that has to do with the veil. So I feel like I would love for the for the veil to actually be at this train station, and it'd yes. be super symbolic because of the whole partition thing too. So that, I love this. This is really that, great theory. and I think there's a reason they brought up Thor in episode four. I think they're gonna bring it up again by being like the veil or whatever is there, but it's like. Uh, or it's the train station is a big part because it's the people it's the clandestine yeah. people as mm. well because the she was yeah. like well, a lot of us got lost that day and it's like yeah because you guys are just like us in a way just how like uh new asgard it was like it's not the place it's the people and i think that's the same symbolism that goes with mm. this it's like it's not that you guys are separated into two now it's that you guys are still people to be fair yeah. i am not mm. pakistani i am not indian like i don't have the right to say like any of like, we are all the same people because I did not live that history. That is not my culture. Yeah. Um, but I just think if there is a message that they're trying to bring across, it's that like, even the clandestines were there too. Like there was a lot, it was bigger than a lot of people, but it was destroying a big place. Um, okay, now you lost me, Jess. What do you mean you're not Pakistani? I have uh, assumed this entire time. I'm, I'm brown, wow. just like you, but just from a different <laughs> continent. From I mean, a I'm brown. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, so okay, so we're all brown. I get this. And I am see through. Yay! And I'm your little Winnie ghost a ghost. friend. You can like, You're like gross. Like you can see through me. It's not cool. I I feel like there's a lot of merit to this to this uh, theory, mostly because obviously number one it's just, but also because of the fact that um, I mean they've been giving hints throughout the entire series. The noir is essentially just a tangible 
form of the quantum universe. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. the quantum <laughs> realm. So what we're looking at here is essentially a way to punch through into the quantum realm. And mm -hmm. if there's people already on one side of it who have the ability to, you know, wield whatever to make it through that, or if there was a crack somewhere, I mean, who's to say, you know, that uh, this isn't something that is definitively in a place because of a people yeah. you know we've seen mm -hmm. things where like mm -hmm. situations happen or, or places are unique because of what happened there mm -hmm. i mean look at sokovia you know so you you have all these different elements of because of the importance of the place and the amount of i guess you know energy invested into that place that could be almost like a like a gateway right there and then like jess said so i think i think there's a lot of merit to this mm -hmm. yeah i like it I I think there that that and there is so many like little hints to it there and uh, obviously this is Eric Voss's brain this is MT's brain this is like Whitney's brain anyone that does a breakdown brain of like pulling every little bit of information that probably isn't connected they just put it in the show but <laughs> they put literally everything they kept being like um there's a gate that you have to go through there's uh yeah. there were like histo when you look at the sign that was like don't go beyond this part because we're trying to restore the beauty of the history and like yeah. uh, there there's so many nods where i was like okay we get it there's something mystical beyond <laughs> that part that we haven't seen yet so I was, yeah like, there is there is that and then the, uh, clearly when i was like thinking of this theory i then was like uh, oh, oh, so the fact that when she stabbed her bangle, I think that was nor mm. weapon, nor weaponry. So the nor weaponry mm. with the actual bangle coming in contact made her go into the actual yeah. pass. Whereas when she did in the first episode, she was mm. only using the power of the bangle. Uh, but yeah. I also realized after episode four happened, I was like, oh, so Kamala's the stars that led her grandma back to her, gra her great grandfather. Because I think she's yes, that was, I was literally yeah. waiting and, um, till my turn to say oh. that, but I think <laughs> my no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. No, no. Uh, my my theory on that is that I agree with you. I think that she is now back in the past, and I I really think that it's gonna be like a Harry Potter Patronus yeah. situation mm. where uh, her great grandma does get sucked back through that crack into the Nor. And then nobody's there to help her grandma get onto the train. And mm -hmm. so she has to do it. And so I think that the stars that came out of nowhere yeah. were always from Kamala. Which and I, I think that's going to also lead to a very like emotional scene where she actually ends up meeting her great grandma. And in the course of like battling and trying to protect her family, she tells her, you know, protect your, you know, protect my daughter as she gets slipped away through the Nor and she has to do the building of the stars to I, help her. I out. think the grandma knows. I think mm -hmm. the grandma knows. And that's why she kept being like, have you found what you're looking for? And it was like, no. And it was like the train. I saw the train. You have to come back to Karachi and go see the train. I think the grandma mm -hmm. absolutely knows that her knee, her granddaughter is the stars, but she's yeah. not saying anything until that she finds so it out. That is so great. Oh, I would love cool. if she knew. And she was like, I can't I wait to meet you again when you're born. <laughs> there was because when they were having their conversation in the room, I was like, the grandma knows a lot, but doesn't know a lot. But I think she does know a lot. Yeah. She's just not telling mm -hmm. her. She's like, you need to figure it out on your own own um yeah. and we we love she's those pulling kinds of an old ben kenobi yeah and then um, she's like it was me yeah. the whole time i had the higher ground um and, <laughs> it was me yeah that's um it was me all yeah. along no, I, I, I love like everything that you guys are saying right now because like we're going back to eddie real quick like i love how you mentioned that like uh, the quantum realm could be involved mm -hmm. in quantum energy because like when she goes back in time we do see like this like yellow glow like this yeah. yellow, the yellow cracks that are sort of look like quantum energy. Mm. If you look back to in uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, he, uh, we see um, I always mix their names up. Janet Van Dyne. I yeah. mean, she uses the, her quantum energy to heal ghosts, and like it's a very similar color there. So like, yeah. I think that we could be seeing like maybe when we get the second bangle, maybe that could be like a quantum energy type of bangle that like yeah. using them together could allow Kamala to go back in time anytime she wants. That'd be really fun. Um, yeah. But what Jess said about like the two. Um, the dagger from another universe, like hitting the the bangle, which I'm assuming is from this universe. I think like there, 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 something could have happened between like the two different types of matter interacting with mm. each other. It's like we are not supposed to be touching each other, so like yeah. a crack well, in reality is going to happen. And so like th it that could have eventually be been, or could have essentially been Aisha's weapon that she reforged into a bangle, so that way, like if she gave up mm. violence. Mm. 
to have a family here in this realm or in this universe, you know, she could have very well, you know, reforged it or changed it however her abilities can and turned it into a bangle that would, you know, harness the power of Nor, much like her weapons. Because everybody's uh, weapon seems to be like defy the laws of physics, you know, and whatnot. And, you know, so we know that these aren't like local weapons uh so <laughs> she may very well have turned hers into that bangle and that's what that bangle is oh i like i have two things really that quick cool. that yeah. i was like yes yeah also okay so first off I, th- I i agree with you if that is aisha's tool i think that that girl um cameron's mom actually did kill her uh during the partition and maybe in the flashback kamala mm-hmm. might be able to see that but if she didn't i agree with whitney when she says that she gets zipped back into the nor i think i think she struggled she was like my daughter mm-hmm. my baby my husband like what the yeah. hell and her freak out is the thing that caused the the veil to crack and so it's like a full mm-hmm. circle moment where maybe the only person that can remake that happen is kamala um, which is will be a sad moment because it'll be like her great grandma on the other side, her on the other yeah. side, and she's closing that door like in um, and turning red, mm. where she's looking in the mirror and it's like you can stay a panda or you <laughs> cannot like the rest of us, and she it closes. Um, so I think that would be an emotional scene that we might be able to see. I hope we see. Oh yeah, I would love like that. I love turning red a lot. So like I love that comparison. It's really good. Oh, turning red was so good. Um, so good. Such a good movie. You know the episode um, for no, this I one lo- is called Turning Red, by the way. Yeah, it, it was. is. That yeah. is literally yeah. the title of this episode. That's so funny. Yeah. Or like, see, was it Seeking Red Turning? I don't know. I think it's um, this one's about the soup. Red. That one's about the panda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because we whitewashed Chinese soup, and that's why it's red now. Or uh, it's not red anymore. Um, we do a lot of bad things. S M H. It's true. It's very true. Um, but no, I love all these theories, like all the, like especially all these um, additions to Justice Theory. But we have to now give her the ultimate judgment: Is Justice Theory rogus or bogus? Let's start with Whitney Van Leningham. Rogus oh. is hell, baby. I hard yeah. agree. Hell yeah, I hey. think I do. I really think that she's gonna end up being the stars. That's like yeah. the first thing I thought when I watched that episode. I was like, it's gonna be her. And she's gonna save her own grandma. Right. <laughs> Can you imagine if she cho- if I she just wait. decides not to save the child and then she just disappears? Oh yeah, just like <laughs> she actually, just disappears. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> back back, to, back the to the future, future event. She's yeah, looking at a picture yeah. of everything. Gone. <laughs> it's like you're not Captain Marvel. Get out of my face. Yeah, get out of my. It's your grandma, Marty. Oh. Your grandma. <laughs> yeah, your grandma, Marty. We gotta do something with Marty. your grandma, Marty. It's about your um, grandma. <laughs> But Eddie, what do you think? I, I think it's 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 pretty roguish. I feel like this is one of those elements that I feel has been building up towards. And if you're somebody who's not very savvy in the MCU, you know, universe and all the mechanics and everything that they've been introducing, I feel like the fact that this is ultimately the quantum realm and this is a fixed point, if you will, because we've talked about fixed points before in the uh, MCU. Mm. So I, I feel like this place, this time, this moment is a fixed point. Absolutely. And uh, we're mm-hmm. just gonna, it's just all going to solidify the foundation that's already been created in all the other shows and whatnot. And this is this is a great uh, theory into making that a reality. So, Rogus. I agree. And Rogus, it's Jess, so it's Rogus. I, Rogus. Yes, of course. Jess is like the queen of rogue theories, man, I gotta say. Um, because I also agree with both of you guys because, yeah, like I, I just want to, I really want to see that final battle at this train station. I feel like there's mm-hmm. something really special about this train station throughout the entire series and like to for the veil to open up there and like because like the whole symbolism of a train being able to trans- transport you from a to b i just feel like this makes a lot of sense so like yeah and like i just i just really want to see some weird time travel shit happen with this train station i just want this train station to be the focal the, the true focal point of the show uh, by having the veil be there so i'm going to say rogus as well Making Jess the triple rogus queen of the day. Oh my god! Look at Jess yeah. go. Triple rogus. Trogi. Triple rogus. A trogi. A trogi. Nice. <laughs> She's trogus queen trogus. <laughs> now we're getting into Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> but this now leads us to our rogue question of the day. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Hooray! Because we all know that Kamala Khan is a massive super fan of Captain Marvel, and with many expecting Brie Larson herself to make an appearance as Carol Danvers at some point during the show, 
tell us your roguish idea for how the scene could go down. I pitched this before. <laughs> I pitched this before, not in Rogue Theory, on the break room, where I mm. think it's going to be at the very end. Very, very end. What's mm. going to happen is Monica Photon Jr. is going to show up mm. and is going to be like, I can help you with your powers because... I am Photon. I can do it. Monica's here on Earth. She's doing <laughs> I am fine. Photon. And it's then me. Carol Danvers is going to jump in and be like, you're the one using my name and taking my powers. And that's going to set us up for the Marvels <laughs> where they're going to be fighting to train Kamala. But Kamala doesn't need to be trained anymore. She's already great. But she's going to bring them back together, uh, Monica and Carol Danvers. Because right now, Monica hates that bitch. So it's true. I think it's, it's, it's going to happen happened between. Though. Yeah, something I, happened also to another, that she was like, I a, do not like Carol. Another break room theory of mine. I think Carol Danvers gave her mom cancer. Uh, <laughs> but that is for Ooh. another day. I honestly have a feeling I, as well. As well, I think that's a very valid theory. I think they it's went together man. too many different places and she got sick. And she did it because she's an alien human now. Either way. Mm. Ugh. That, that would be a really great reason for why Carol Danvers like, doesn't want to be around Earth. Because Earthlings probably can't handle her radiation. She's probably like a... Like sort of like the whole like Dark Doctor Manhattan thing in that Watchmen. Yes. When like yes. you know people thought that he yes. was a radioactive threat yes. to people. Yes. So like yeah, that'd be I yes. love that idea. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean it would be very sad, but yes. Um. Yeah. Like that's a really great idea. I love it. But yes. Um. What, what do you guys have? What do you What do you got, Whitney? So I think that it's possible that Ms. Marvel's going to come back. Um. Because I think that the bangle might be Cree technology that mm-hmm. like came to our planet um the theory that i had like a, a week or something ago was that it's possible that the kree came to our planet when they were escaping like the kree skull war scroll war not skull war <laughs> that'd be cool though. that'd be metal <laughs> as hell the skull yeah. war uh the, the kree, kree skull, skull war we're, only, skull we're hitting people with skulls war. they're not even ours they're not even our <laughs> skulls really we're just gonna fire. get them um, <laughs> Uh, the Kree Scroll War, if they were like escaping or running from that, I think that it could have been like possibly around the same time that the meteorite landed in Wakanda and gave the Earth vibranium. Mm. I think that it's possible that the Kree came at some point and this is possibly uh, leftover Kree weaponry. Mm. Um, and mm. so I, and I think that that might be where like the missing bangle went, like perhaps, like they said, it could have either been looted from the tomb already, or maybe right. it was given to somebody else, buried somewhere else, whatever. And so I think that Ms. Marvel is going to come to earth to check it out and be like, oh, is Captain there Marvel, pre-tech being used? Captain Marvel. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What did I say? <laughs> Ms. Marvel? You said Ms. Marvel. Whoops. I think they. Like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Captain Marvel's gonna come back mm. to talk to Ms. Marvel because she's gonna be like, yo, I think you got a Kree bangle there, baby girl. You want to uh, <laughs> let me know what's going on? Mm. And then they're gonna like work together. That's what I think. Mm. Ooh. Interesting. So it's gonna be the bangle that connects I, them, right? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be the bangle that brings it that's, back. That's actually smart. That's actually cool. My theory is this. Because we haven't seen a follow-up from the damage control folks... Uh, I feel like the way this is going to happen is in the end, then the last episode, we're going to see Damage Control finally catch up with Miss Marvel, take her, question her and everything, and as like it seems like she's going to be going away for a while, we're actually going to see a actual government official come in, Ooh. otherwise known as Rhodey, say, guys, I'm taking care of this one, let me go ahead and I'll handle her, she's coming with me, takes her. They walk all the way out of the complex, and she goes, "Well, why? How come you? How do you even know about who I am? How do you blah blah?" He goes, "Well, my girlfriend actually wants to talk to you." And then, boom! Captain Mar or Captain Marble like, my- <laughs> "Hell yeah!" Get I'm it. just my girlfriend's and- chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I mean, we all know that's 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 possibly going to happen sometime soon. I mean, shipping you know Rhodes and Rhodey and uh, Captain Marvel and from the comics and everything else. So. Yeah. Right. And they sort of hinted at a relationship oh, in uh, mm-hmm. Endgame, I feel. Endgame. Some sort of, sort of mm-hmm. like, be careful, honey. It's like, okay, boo boo. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I would love to see Rhodey and Captain Marvel be introduced in that way. That'd be really fun. Um, because, like, yeah. like I feel fun. like we do, like, you're right. Like, DODC is going to arrest Miss Marvel at some point. We're going to see Agent Cleary mm-hmm. question the, the person that he's been looking for. And I think that it'd be really great if, if Captain Marvel just bailed her out. It's like, listen, she's fine. Um, 
uh, if you don't think if you, you can fight me for it because like I'm yeah. gonna take this girl now. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I really love that idea. Cool. And I think that I I'm gonna award that one my rogue roguest rogue question to answer of the day because I I think that would be really fun. I just want to see. I want to see Rhodey be the next, like, Coulson in yeah. all these se- series. And just showing up. Just like, all right, I'm yeah. here at this shield ceremony. And now I'm here saving Miss Marvel. And now I'm flying around being, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> war machine of peace, meeting new friends. There you um, go. But yes, I think that's really fun. But all of these ideas are wonderful. I love you guys. You guys are so smart. And you guys are the roguest people that I know. But that is it for this episode of Rogue Theory. Huge thank you to our guests, Jessica Clemens, Whitney Van Lanningham, and Eddie Villanueva. Go support them wherever they are, especially go check out the Film Philosophers podcast with Eddie Villanueva, really great guy. And support our channel by checking out all of our awesome merch over at newrockstarsmerch.com. And if you have some rogue theories of your own, be sure to join our New Rockstars Discord. Just search for New Rockstars over on Discord if you're 18 and older to join the conversation today. You can follow me at MasterTamed on Twitter if you want to see me tweet some weird shit, really fun theories. But most importantly, you can hit that notification bell so you can get notifications every time we upload a video here on YouTube after you subscribe. It's very important. Subscribe first, then hit the notification bell. It's in order to do these things. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you guys. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. See ya. Bye.